Today, I'm going to show you how to make, how to do the mechanics, the heart of the mechanics for a knuckle ring that I'm going to create. So that's going to be a ring that I'm going to be wearing across two fingers, and then I'm going to put flowers across it. out with Smithers Oasis uh, diamond wire. It's aluminum wire, but it's etched a little bit. And uh, the fact that it's etched and it's still nice and stiff makes it uh, that, that it's really a nice sturdy wire, a little bit harder than the usual aluminum wire. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna just find the end to it. Let's see where it is here. Let's see, oh dear. Okay, here we go. So what we're gonna do is sort of Pull it out so it's nice and straight. The whole idea with wire is to keep it nice and nice and straight. So what I'm gonna do is cut uh, a piece, but before I do that, I'm gonna kind of figure out the triangle. It's gonna be in shapes of a triangular form here. Uh, so I'm gonna just take the wire, um, uh, the wire cutter, actually it's really a plier, and I'm gonna kind of stretch the wire so it's nice and straight and then bring it down and end with an extension that's a little bit longer than the other side. So I'm gonna start out like this. So these makes kind of a triangular frame that I'm gonna use for the knuckle ring. I need actually two of them. So you can, you can see that uh, the instruction on the first piece. What I'm gonna do is take a half a tab of U-glue dash, and then I'm going to actually just attach it together where the two of them meet right there. And then it goes on to the one, that spot, the merging spot. And I'm gonna just put that piece of U-glue right in there. And then I'm gonna start out by taking the metallic wire, which is also an Oasis product. And I'm gonna start out by uh, just laying that right across that where the two, two wires merge and then where the, the U-glue is. And I, I'm going to just sort of bring it to the tip so that it, the end of this piece has a tip that, um, that is looped that is softer than the point of the aluminum wire right there. So I'm gonna just bring it out to the top and I'm gonna start up by binding it together so that it goes to a nice tapered tip. And then I'm gonna bring it down where the two wire meet, the um, diamond wire meet. And then I'm gonna actually cut these into a, a, a piece because it's really difficult to sew this through with that on the spools, so you have to cut it off. And then I'm gonna to start to sort of bridge it back and forth to create um, a grid. So what I'm gonna to do to start with is I'm gonna wrap it around the wire on the one side and then bring it across to the other side and you wrap it around, bring it to the other side and you're gonna do the same. And you just sort of crisscross back and forth like that until the wire runs out. So I'm gonna do this again. So I'm wrapping it around. The reason why I really like the, the, the diamond wire versus the regular aluminum wire is that it's actually notched, which makes it so that this wire that I do as a wrap around the metallic wire, as well as later with the bullion, it doesn't slide around because there's these notches that keeps them, uh, the wire from sliding around. And that's, that's really one of the best feature about this diamond wire. So I'm just doing the wrap and around, wrap and around, and I'm crisscrossing back and forth to keep this from collapsing in. So you can see that I need this bridging back and forth so that it makes the, the, the space in between nice and rigid. So I just ran out of that wire, the cut wire that I had, the metallic wire. So I'm gonna have to do another, uh, another length of wire to continue on this, uh, the fin to finish this triangular piece. So this time, instead of continuing on where we left off, we're gonna actually start out from the other end. 
because this is a tricky part, this end right here. So what I'm gonna do is start out by taking a, a half a tab of U glue and then just sort of stretching it across the end right there so that there's a lot of stickiness on that end. So over that half a tab of U glue, that sticky U glue, and I've taken off the paper so that it's nice and sticky, what I'm gonna do is take this um, metallic wire and twist it over that area, just any part of that strip, and then bring it down to start crisscrossing over this. So I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna cross over to the other side. So we're doing exactly the same thing that we did coming up this ladder, but we're now going down from the wide end to narrow end. So I'm going like this. But what I have to do to make sure that in the end that this whole strip is covered with wire, I'm gonna actually revisit back up to that sticky part um, with the U-glue on the top and just sort of crisscross a few more times so that there's no big gaping gaps up in here. So I'm gonna, again, from there, so I'm actually kind of crisscrossing and kind of creating a, a little bit more gridding up across the top, just so that it's, it's covered up. Because you can't have a big gap in there. You'll see at the end why that is so. So as I'm getting close to the end of this wire, just I just wanna give you a reminder that as you're pulling, you always hold on to the side you're pulling from. So here I am holding down the wire on my, that, that side of, uh, on, on my left, left side, and then pull, because that makes it so that it, it doesn't sort of push in. It doesn't, um, um, collapse on you. So I'm going back and forth to the finish. So it's getting very close to where the wire ends. The key thing is not to, wherever the wire ends, you should not, you don't want the end of the wire to be too close to the edge because it becomes a little scratchy. You want to kind of hide it in the middle of it all. But anyway, so that's pretty much done right there. Okay, so the next step is just, fin this is really the, the meat. This is what makes everything really sturdy. It doesn't collapse on you because it's bridged with the wire. The next step is to work with the bullion and bullion wire is what gives you a nice finish. So across the top, right there, where we have that little bit of the sticky layer of you glue, I'm gonna start there. And what I wanna do is I want to crisscross back and forth across the top over that sticky um, you glue so that it kind of closes up that end really nicely. It's really important that there's that little strip of sticky sticky you glue because otherwise it just it'll slide off but from after you get that done it's smooth sailing from here because all i all you have to do now is just do a wrap because of the fact that you did all the footwork beforehand with the last layer of metallic wire that actually created the gridding across this this band this triangular band makes it easy now to just do a wrap so that you get a very fine mesh that is really, really attractive. So I'm just finishing up here. I'm almost to the bottom. It took me no time at all. Actually, it's a good idea if you're doing this to, to put your bullion spool inside like a, a, a glass cube or a pottery or like a wooden container or basket so that uh, it could freely sort of spin and, and that it doesn't uh, fall off your table as you're doing it. So I'm almost finished. 
And I'm gonna just sort of go back to where there's a little bit of that U glue down in here where it came together that the two ends of the, uh, the diamond wire. And I'm just gonna press it in really hard and cut so that it's embedded in that U glue. So this is what we have, a triangular piece like this. Now how to make this so that it's really sturdy uh, for use as part of your knuckle ring. When you wrap with a bullion like this, it sort of puffs out uh, from one side to the other. So what we're gonna do now is just press really hard kind of around that, the diamond wire so that it's like really like pressed sheet metal. Because what this does is make this even, like the shape even lock in even more so that it's just a sheet metal that's sort of bridging between the two diamond wire. So now we're gonna make this into a ring. So what we're gonna do, well, first let me take off my ring because I gotta form it around my finger. So what we're gonna do is make it so that it shapes around my index finger. So let's see. So maybe it's something like this, but then, so I shape this for the ring. So I've got it over my index finger and I got this piece that's sort of sweeping out to the right, my right hand side. So I think I'm gonna just bring it up and over something like this. So basically because it's a knuckle ring, we want a little bit bulkier volume here. So what I've got, and I already have a piece that's made already. So there's another one that I made that's done in the exact same manner. And so that shaped in such a way, along with this one, gives me this to this. So maybe it's, it's something like this. So this might be sort of the look of the, the knuckle ring. So what I'm gonna do is sew these two together so they, they go together uh, so that then I can then start to design the flowers onto it. So here's what the knuckle ring looks like after it's sort of shaped together. You, you're, like it's really not that difficult to be able to just slip in like this. It, they were sewn together and now I've kind of shaped it also with this one so I, I can actually put my thumb in there. This is bent over so that it sits on, on top of the wrist or if you want to, you can slip it underneath so that it goes, it's like kind of a wrap around so that it's got a little bit of a bracelet look to it. So it's, it shapes in whatever way you want and that's the beauty of it. It's really a very cool surface. Uh, it's really kind of shiny, but yet it's not glitzy shine. It's sort of a real jewel-like shine. And so onto this, next, next time I'll be sharing with you how to flower this thing. So um, like the video and don't forget to subscribe.